Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, I hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. You know, this myth that LeBron James is a greater all-around, quote-unquote all-around, better basketball player than Michael Jordan, is just that. It's a myth. It's a lie. It's a fabrication. These people are trying to, you know, bamboozle you into believing that LeBron James is this great all-around player. And what's funny is that when these people, like a Nick Wright or a Shannon Sharp or a J.J. Reddick or a Gilbert Arenas or a Draymond Green, any, any of these idiots, they try to give you some nonsensical reasons why they believe that LeBron James is the greatest all-around player of all time. It's funny. They never mention the defensive end. They never mention defense. And to me, that's all around. Both sides of the ball, offense and defense. I don't want to hear about rebounding and passing. I don't want to hear about that nonsense. That doesn't make you a great all-around player. Both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. That's how you're a great all-around player. They never mention that with LeBron James because they know that that argument doesn't hold water against someone like a Michael Jordan. But when you take a deep dive at the numbers, guys, and you look at the game, you watch the game, you can tell right away that Michael Jordan is a better all-around player. Listen, Michael Jordan is a better rebounder than LeBron James is. It, guys, it's so simple to see when you watch the games. You don't even have to look at the numbers. Watch the games. For their positions, for their size, Michael Jordan is a greater rebounder than LeBron James. LeBron James is 6'9", 260, and averages less rebounds than Larry Bird? How is that possible in the same position? They both play the same position. Michael Jordan's one of the greatest rebounding shooting guards in the history of the NBA. One of the greatest offensive rebounding shooting guards in the history of the NBA. That's a fact. Go look it up. Go watch the games. How many putback dunks does Michael Jordan have? How many tippings does Michael Jordan have on his resume? And the numbers are there. Michael Jordan averages more offensive rebounds than LeBron James, who is three inches taller and almost 60, 70 pounds heavier and plays a, a different position. He should be out -reading, rebounding Michael Jordan by a mile. And yet, Michael Jordan averages more offensive rebounds than LeBron James. Why? Because offensive rebounds take effort and hustle, something that Michael Jordan has always been known for, right, that LeBron James has not been known for. Also, when you look at the defensive numbers, it's not even close. LeBron James has never averaged more than 1.5 blocks in a, in a season for an average. Michael Jordan's in it two times, man. Three inches smaller, averaging more blocks. That's crazy, man. Steals. LeBron James has never averaged two plus steals a game in his career. Michael Jordan's in it 10 times. So when you look at the numbers on the defensive side of the ball, it's not even close, right? We all know about the all defensive selections, the defensive player of the year award that Michael Jordan has won, that LeBron James will never sniff, never sniff it. He'll never get to nine uh, all defensive first team selections. The man can play for 30 years, he'll never reach it. It doesn't matter. He'll never win a defensive player of the year award. And let me just debunk something real quick while I'm on the subject. A lot of times you'll hear people say things that LeBron James was robbed out of a defensive player of the year award by Marcus Gasol. That makes no sense. No sense at all. Look at the defensive numbers that Marcus Gasol was putting up. Look at the team he played on. And look at the prowess of that team. Someone like a Tim Duncan has never won a defensive player of the year award. Someone like a Scottie Pippen has never won a defensive player of the year award. Those players are miles ahead of LeBron James on the defensive end. They never won a defensive player of the year award. All right? So stop the nonsense of LeBron James was robbed. All right? Stop that nonsense right there. Now let's go to free throw shooting. Should we go to free throw shooting? LeBron James has shot 60% in the 60s from the free throw line, I think, five times in his career. Michael Jordan never shot below 78%. Never once. So that's crazy right there when you think about that. When it comes to actual shooting, it's not even close once again. And you can look at the field goal percentage and you can tell me what you want to tell me that LeBron James has a higher field goal percentage for his career than Michael Jordan. We all know why that is. Michael Jordan's career field goal percentage was a lot higher until he came back and played for the Wizards. But once again, Michael Jordan didn't care about stats. So he came back and played for the Wizards and sacrificed some of his career numbers or his career averages for that. However, though, when you look at the game, watch the game. Like I said, not just the stats, you look at the game. LeBron James shots are all layups, dunks. And he's not really good at finishing under the basket uh, at that size. Once again, the man's three inches taller than Michael Jordan and weighs almost 60, 70 pounds more than Michael Jordan, yet could not finish under the rim as efficiently as Michael Jordan did. So don't tell me, listen, if you need one shot to save your life or you need one shot for a game, a series, whatever it is, one shot, who are you taking, guys? You're, you're going to take LeBron James to save your life 
or are you going to take Michael Jordan for one shot? The answer is simple and clear to Michael Jordan. Everybody knows that. You would never take LeBron James for a final second shot. And don't talk to me about clutch. So if we want to go to clutch now, you think about the finals and you think about LeBron James and how many finals he's played in. You'll be surprised. LeBron James has never hit a game winner in the finals. Not one game winner. I believe he's like 0 for 6 or 0 for 7 for a game winner in the finals. And we all, I'm, just, I'm not going to go through it, but we all know Michael Jordan has hit several game winners. I mean, in his career, several. So when you talk about the all-around game of a LeBron James versus a Michael Jordan, to me personally, it's not even close. The defensive side of the ball is not even close. The rebounding is not close. LeBron James is a terrible rebounder for his size. Terrible, averaging seven rebounds at six foot nine, two sixty. That's terrible. How does Larry Bird, the people who say he's an unathletic white guy, average more rebounds than LeBron James? How is that possible, guys? Explain that to me. Why? Because the effort in LeBron James is not a good rebounder. Oh, so once again, guys, like I said, it's not close. Michael Jordan is way better all-around player. If you guys want to talk about passing, maybe I'll give you a slight edge to LeBron James on passing, but not even necessarily the passing. The willingness to pass is maybe what LeBron James, because LeBron James is scared to close out games, so he will pass the ball away to guys. But don't tell me because he averages seven assists and Michael Jordan averages five and a half that he's a better playmaker or a better passer. Or because he's more willing to pass, that makes him a better passer. It's not true, ladies and gentlemen, because if you take into account the assists, the amount of turnovers LeBron averages for his career opposed to Michael Jordan, which is one, one whole turnover more, plus the amount of steals Michael Jordan averages more than LeBron, it's all even, guys. Michael Jordan, to me, is a greater playmaker, right, guys? Better ball handler. It's not even close. LeBron can't dribble. LeBron has no handle, and people really believe he's a dribbler. So once again, guys, don't believe the hype. Michael Jordan is a way better all-around player than LeBron James.